Hey guys, today we're going to be making a mousetrap using C4D Dynamics and a few connectors. This was quite fun to do, so I hope you will enjoy that as well. You can get this basic file for free. I've left a link in the description. So without further ado, let's dive in. So let's go to the top view and add a simple cube. I'm going to hit C to make this editable. I'm going to go to the point selection and I want the snapping to be enabled. You can use Shift S to enable and disable this. And in the options, I want this to snap to the points and to the edges. So let's select the points and snap them to the base here, making sure everything is nicely aligned like so. And this is going to be the base. Then I'm going to control drag this one. This is going to be the smaller part. I call this one small. I'm going to make this a child and I'm going to right click on the little arrows here to zero out the position and rotation. And I'm going to align the points to the small part over here. So let's do that. So I'm just going to put this in a null and call this dynamics. So basically what we are doing here is making a proxy for the dynamics to be quicker. Next, we're going to be making this metal part here and I'm going to just add in a cube, make this smaller, move that up. And we want this to be aligned. So I'm just going to move this over here, trying to align that as much as possible. I hit T and scale this down. From the top view, I'm going to scale this on the X axis here. Call this one metal one. And I'm gonna control drag. I rotate this 90 degrees and move this over. I copy this one and I want to move this on the X axis here. And instead of 40 here, I want minus 40. This way we're gonna have the cube on the other side. Maybe we want this cube to be a little bigger. And finally, we're gonna need metal two here, which is this part. I'm just going to control drag the cube we just made and I rotate it 90 degrees and I move this over here. Here I'm going to make everything editable. So by hitting C, I make those editable. This one is going to be metal two. All right. So to select the points and move them over here. Next step is to select all of those proxy models and go to the tags, bullet tags and using a rigid body. So let me hide the high race model. And now we're just going to add a plane, which is going to be there just for collisions. I'm going to make this bigger. This is going to be one by one on the plane here. I'm going to add a collider body. And if I now hit play, we're going to have to change a few things. So this is metal one. We have those two parts and we want this let's go to the collision here we want this to be a compound collision shape and we want the shape to be boxes next what we want we want to connect the different pieces here to the main shape here and to do that we're going to use connectors so we're going to go to the simulation here simulate and we want a connector here so let's make that a child of the base the position here of this one in the hierarchy is not really important it's just to keep things organized so i'm gonna make everything a child of the base this is a hinge for now so it's gonna have only one axis let me just draw the high-res model here and we want this to be rotated 90 degrees so i'm gonna activate the snapping again and we're gonna need the axis here so this way the Connector here should snap to the axis. Selecting the connector, we're going to go to the object here. We want this to be a hinge and object A will be the base. Object B will be the small piece here. And we want to make sure that the ignore collisions here is checked. So this way, the small part that's going through the base here is not causing any problems. So this is going to be connector small. I'm going to control drag this one. And for this, we're going to change object B to be metal one. So we want to move this connector to be in the right position, something like that. I'm going to control drag this one once more. And this is going to be for metal two. And we're going to replace metal one with metal two here. So this is going to be over here. So let's see. 
it if I hide the main part here and hit play. So we have an issue here. Let's go back to zero and we want to change this. On this one, we want to uncheck ignore collisions. And on the second one here, we're going to do the same like so. And uh, this time it's going to behave a little better. Next step is we want to add a spring to add some tension. Let's go back to simulate and add a spring. So we're going to make this a child of the base as well. So as object A, we're going to use the base and we want the metal one to be object B. So we're just going to make this a child of this connector here and we're going to zero the position and rotation and move this out. And so we did that because we want the spring at the same position as the hinge. So let's select the spring and we want to change the type from linear to angular. So we're going to have another icon here and let's hit play. So already this is doing something more like what we expect. So what we want to add now here is something like this part that is attaching this stick to the smaller part here. And to do that, we're going to control drag. We don't need the dynamic tag here. And I want to move this forward and using T, I'm going to shrink this like so and maybe rotate it and move it over here. I'm going to go to the dynamic tag and make this a compound collision shape. And I want the shape to be a box. So this is going to be its own piece now. And we're going to control drag this little part here. And I'm going to make this a child of this rectangle. And I'm going to move this up. So just to make things a little more obvious, I'm just going to change the colors. So for the base, I'm going to make this a custom color. So I'm going to make this blue. For the smaller part here, we're going to make this a custom color. White is okay for me. This part, I'm going to make this a custom color as well. And this is going to be this gray. And those are going to be maybe darker gray. So let's hit play. All right, I forgot to select this one and make this a compound collision shape as well and box and so on. So for the base here, we want to make this a box as well. It's going to be quicker to simulate. Let's see. So everything now should be a compound collision shape with a box here, except for the base, which is uh, here. We can set the inner tag to none. And we could also select everything here and uncheck the self collision and use different objects. So maybe we want to hit Ctrl D, go to the bullet tab here, and you're going to select experts. And here we have the steps per frames. So we could set this to 50. The simulation will be a little more accurate. We would like the spring here to be a little stronger. So it's going to hold everything together. So to do that, we're going to have the rest angle here. So let's try 5000 degrees. It's going to be stronger. Something else that we can do is maybe for the small part here, we want to increase the friction here. So let's increase that to 300. For the spring, we're going to increase the stiffness to 50. Okay, so now things is uh, starting to intersect. So maybe we're going to hit Ctrl D again and increase the steps per frame. Okay, so let's decrease the damping here just to see. So maybe on those uh, two parts here, we want more friction. So on this one, I was already at uh, 300. So let's set this one to 500 and the stick here, we want this to be 500 as well. Hitting Ctrl D, I'm going to change some more settings here. I'm going to set the collision margin to zero and the scale to 10 centimeters. And here I'm going to add a few more steps, reframes. All right, so let's try something else. Uh, let's select this one. 
and I'm gonna make this one bigger. Like so, and I'm gonna move this just in between and let's hit play. This is holding together. We're gonna test it with a cube. Let's move the cube upper here and I'm gonna move this just on the edge here and I'm gonna add another bullet rigid body and let's hit play. So as you can see now, this is a little too strong. So let's select this one maybe rotate them a bit like so let's see right so maybe we're gonna select this one and we can move this so they just touch a little bit here so this could do the trick so here you really have to experiment on where the shapes are okay so let's move that like so and Uh, okay, so this seems to work. Another thing we want to do is um, just deactivate the spring for a moment. You can see that we have a little bar here and we don't want this to go further than the bar. We want to limit this. So let's go back and select the right connector and in the angular limit here, we're going to activate that and this is the default orientation so we don't want this to go further than 16.5 and in this direction we're gonna just have a look so we are at 75 so let's say we want to limit the lower angle here to minus 75 Okay, so let's hit play. Okay, as you can see here, it stops when it's horizontal. All right, so let's see the render here and from the side. So here you can see that we are going through a little bit and maybe 16 here is enough. All right, so here we have the main setup. Let's activate the spring again. So just to show you what I did with the high-res version, let me hide this one and the spring here. So this part is a tracer object. We want this to follow the metal part here, this one. So to do that, uh, it's quite simple. So let's deactivate this. So this is made of three parts. We have this little line, then we have the helix. And finally, we have this little extension, which is a child of the main uh, square here. And then I'm using the tracer to connect those lines. And then the trace links, I'm using the spring base, the helix and the spring extend, and I connect all objects here. And so this way we can have the full line here going from one side to the other. And then I simply used a sweep nerve on the tracer. When I rotate this part, the helix is adjusting. To do that, I added some espresso to the helix. So I'm taking rotation P of metal one, I'm feeding it to a range mapper, and then I'm basically just changing the end angle of the helix. So when we rotate this part, it's following along. So I'm just gonna use the high res parts and add them as children of the dynamic ones. Uh, the only thing we have to do is selecting them and we're gonna add some uh, rigid body tags and the reason why we do that is just to say the dynamics are disabled. So this way everything that's inside this is not used. So with the base we're gonna make this a child of the dynamic base here. The small is going to be a child of the small dynamic. Metal 1 goes here and metal 2 goes in there. If I now go to this null and hide everything and I'm just going to show the render versions of those. The high-res version is now following the dynamic ones.
Here we have a little issue, as you can see. And this is because in the Helix here, in the Expresso, we are not referencing the right object. So instead of referencing this one, which rotation is not moving anymore because it's a child now, we are going to reference the dynamic one. OK, so let's try this. And this is now working. In my dynamic setup, I didn't have nothing to stop this to go through the coil here. This is pretty simple. I'm just going to add a new cube and make it a child of the base here. I hit C and make this editable. I'm just going to scale this. We want to go to the dynamic tag of the base here. And so in the collision, we want this to be compound collision shape and we want this to be a box and this should be okay now. So maybe we could still adjust. So maybe we're going to select this one once more and move this. So it's just barely touching. The last thing here is if I pause here, you are going to see that we have another issue. Here, the coil is not behaving as we want, and this is because the Expresso is looking for the rotation on this one, and it's looking for the P rotation. The rotation on this one are uh, global rotations, and we want uh, local rotation. So let's see. If I just move the middle one here and make this a child of base, you can see here that we get everything going back in place. And we really have the main rotation on the P axis. All right, so that's the setup. I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.